Okay, here we are back again, and with me I have uh, James Tro. Uh, when I heard about what he's doing, I was just so impressed. He's going on Class Afloat Adventures, is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, Class Afloat. It's just what is it? Tell our audience what it is, because it is so exciting. So uh, what uh, Class Afloat is, it's a Canadian program, and it's tied to Acadia University in Nova Scotia. It's um, a tall ship, a uh, three-mast, fully rigged sailing ship. And we're going to be showing a picture of that, too. Uh, yeah, we've got a picture of it. Uh, it's called the SS Sorlandette. And um, it's, uh, there is a U.S. equivalent called Semester at Sea, but it's, it's so different from what that is because, it, because it's such a smaller vessel compared to what they do. They do have like a big cruise ship. And for Class of Float, it's, it's more of, uh, when I describe it to my friends, I would say pirate ship. It's got the it's got the three big masts and you have to work the sails and the rigging. Did we, and, did we get a picture uh, up there? I don't know. Yeah, there it is, uh, right there, there. Yeah, that's the SS Sorlandette, and it's actually the uh, I believe from what I've been reading the oldest tall ship of its kind still in circulation today. It was built in 1927. Really? In, uh, Christiansen, Norway. Wow. Which uh, is actually where I finish next. Um, I'm sorry, uh, May. I finish in Christensen, Norway next uh, next May for, uh, I believe, like repairs and kind of uh, adding more modern stuff to it. Like I'll have electricity, you have to bring a laptop. And so it counts for me as my first year of college. And you can do it 11th and 12th grade or freshman year in college. You travel for 10 months to 18 different countries. <gasps> What do you do? Uh, what do you do for your your visas, or do you need visas, or I, is it a blanket visa? Actually, something I found interesting when I first signed up for this is that the parent port, one of the one of the three times in the ten month journey that uh, my 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 father, my brother, my family, or anyone that can come visit me is in Cuba. So actually, oh my gosh, <laughs> how uh, cool! I'm going. Uh, uh, with a Canadian passport and citizenship. I've had dual citizenship for quite a few years now. Oh, okay, my, both my parents are born in Canada. So they so, can come through, uh, yeah, uh, through, through my, Canada. I believe, yeah, my dad's going to drive up to Canada and fly down to visit yeah, me in, in yeah. uh, Havana, and, Cuba. Where, I, you're going to be in Havana. In Havana, okay, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, That's and Cuba's a beautiful country. Oh, yeah. It really it's gonna, is. It's going to be like being a time machine, the most preserved place. I mean, it is. Oh, and look at the cars. I exactly. mean, my God, they're incredible. Exactly. Greg just got back from Cuba a oh, few really? months ago. Yeah, he went over there. So, <laughs> so it was kind of, he wanted to see it. And it yeah. was really exciting yeah. to see. So now you said how many countries? I, I see 18 different countries and a total of 23 ports of call because there's multiple stops in Spain. But uh, yeah, 18 different countries. Uh, uh, to name a few, there's uh, uh, Netherlands, Scotland, Norway, France, uh, Bermuda, Barbados. Well, you're going uh, to, to the Caribbean few. then. Yeah, uh, we do kind of a, a Z uh -huh. uh, through the Atlantic. We have three Atlantic crossings, which are almost 20 days at sea, a little over 20 days at sea with, with no land. So that's going to be quite the adventure for me. Okay, now let's get down to business. What do you do for food? And what do you do if you break an arm? <laughs> Um, I'm not, Dad, yeah, yeah. Dad, I'm not God wishing forbid. him a broken arm. <laughs> um, for uh, food-wise, the, the ship has been modernized with, with a lot of uh, new technologies. It, I mean, uh, it runs, it has a big GPS center up, up top, uh, but below deck it has a large freezer, and uh, one of the, the first things we do when we, uh, I set sail from Collingwood, Ontario, one of the first things we do is we go through rationing, and uh, they actually sent an email the other day, because it's uh, uh, exactly a month away, a month away saying there is a pile of supplies that you have to you have to figure out where it goes what to do with it how much you can use at a time and uh, so that's something you have to learn is the preservation of, of the necessities food and water the foods that and spoil quickly exactly. you eat those first right um, and uh, there was a student who uh, attempted documenting the, the journey which actually I'm going to be doing as well and they said at one point they ran out of uh, well they, they ran low on fresh water and oh uh, that's they, not good <laughs> They had you to refrain from rain. shower. <laughs> they had to shower using fresh water in a bucket with holes. Oh no! I thought that was the funniest thing. They could had to no access. Could you shower with salt water? Uh, uh, you could, but it's it's. Uh, I don't think it's good for your body. The way it the probably way it just, isn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. they they tried to to keep that at a minimum to to, to preserve everything that, that, that they really need for as long as possible. So that's something. And I'm do you fish along the way? Uh, that was something I, I haven't really found an answer to. I did find a picture, uh, only I, I haven't been able to find it again, a picture of them, I think it was a, a, a large marlin hanging from uh, the deck, and it was, it was enormous. It looked like they were gutting it, so I'm not sure if they're going to you know, eat it or just study it, because marine biology is uh, a requirement for Study the, it the quickly and then eat it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Take it apart, look at the pieces, eat it. All right. So That's okay. That, I know what that is. <laughs> Uh, so, and then what do you do, so you've got food and water that you have to deal with, yeah. right? 
This built this ship was built in 1927, and you say it's been modernized. Correct. How do you generate? I mean, think about a freezer. You got to keep that cold. How do you generate electricity? Uh, do you have turbine or not turbines, but maybe generators? Or, uh, well, I was. And then, what do you use? Do you use? I mean, is it the old "let's all work together to get on this bicycle to keep it going"? Or right. do you? Or do, is there? Uh, how, tell me. I or was, is this something you're going to learn? This is this is something I was going to learn, and I was actually I was I mean I was considering. I thought the most viable option would be alternative energy, like solar energy, or, or maybe solar some kind of turbine. Work, I yeah. thought solar would be fantastic for being on the open seas. You could store it in a, in a battery. I mean, who, yeah, yeah, who knows how big of a battery they would need, but uh, solar panels would be a good investment for the program, in my opinion. But I, I don't know what they use uh, right now per se. But that's something I'm going to learn really quickly because I'm very interested to find out how they how they do. They it. are they looking at this ship that we were looking at, which was or what we looked at as, a, you know, kind of um, built in, would you say, in the Netherlands in 1927 or wherever it was built. Right. Uh, are they trying to preserve that as being the original? Because you're saying that they did modernize by putting GPS, in, which is, is essential. Right, yeah. Um, it's, I, I think, like you, say, like you said, they're trying to, pres they're kind of trying to preserve it. It seems to be, it's almost the pride of uh, where it's from and where it goes. Uh, there is a video of, the, of its arrival in Lundenburg, and just an enormous amount of people came out to see it. It's, it's not, not only is it, is it the pride of uh, it's Christensen Norway, not only is it the pride of Christensen Norway, it's, kind of, it's a big deal when it does show up because of how old it is. So I think they're trying to preserve that kind of historic factor as well as get it as fully functional as possible. Because they want to continue to use it because right. we're not going to, so people only, aren't going to go on necessary. if it's just like primitive you Correct, know, yeah. to do. So they do uh, want to preserve it, but yeah. keep it functional. So the now, how many are going to be in your group? Uh, in my group, I actually just got the the full list uh, yesterday. There's 40 students, seven university students, um, and I believe I believe 12 crew members. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I know that the ship itself can berth a maximum of above 70 uh, people, and um, but for. The students that are going, there's, a, uh, I think, six different nationalities, uh, U.S., Canada, German, uh, from Mexico, Norway, and Switzerland. Hopefully they can communicate. Is that right, correct? right. We've um, mm -hmm. uh, 35 or so, I think 35 right now are in a Facebook group, which is okay. phenomenal That's really to have. great. That is awesome. I've Skyped and uh, instant message and stuff like that, many of the students. So you're getting, you're getting to meet these Kids yeah, beforehand. which, which feels it, it feels uh, amazing to get to know them beforehand. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine uh, this, this program has been in circulation, I think, since 1987. I can't imagine 20 years ago doing this uh, uh, and then just thinking you have to show up on the spot and then just kind of bluntly have these people and you have to work together right from the get go. Well, to me, what, that sounds kind of foreign. What are you going to do? Are, you, are they going to teach you to climb the mast, matey? <laughs> 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 um, that's the, that's kind of the biggest part is learning how to uh, kind of work work the ship itself. It's kind of going to be as opposed to a classroom. You go and sit down. The classroom is kind of it's a home that you're building the whole time. You're working on it. You have to you do have to learn to climb. It's the, OJT. The you're learning on the job. Training. Exactly. Yeah. So there's uh, you arrive. Um, I set sail August 22nd, or at least I'm on the uh, Sorland at on the 22nd. And then for the next two weeks or so, it's more training based, and then we run the ship. It's uh, it's us. The, the crew. The crew. Can tells you just us what imagine when that when that ship that point leaves hits. port? Oh, yeah. It's like I can't. I, it's going to be. It's so going to be a thrill and a half. Absolutely. Now you didn't answer my question. If you break an arm. Oh, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Daddy wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, uh, a certified medical uh, chief medical officer aboard the uh, ship, and uh, if you get hurt at sea, uh, the officer will take care of you until you reach the next port, and then there is the option to be heli-lifted to the nearest medical facility. Okay, because you are going to, from port to port right. to port. Um, and, and also about the visa. Do you need a visa, or are you staying on the ship? Uh, no, we, we get off the ship and we go travel. So yeah, I've had okay. to get travel, travel visas and certified. And I also had to get uh, vaccinations. Uh, that was a big thing was getting, oh, really? I had to get a couple shots, I had to get because a couple you, different pills, because like what? malaria, uh, yellow fever, Things that from going from country to country overseas okay. could really be could easily be transmitted. Yeah, you want to be on the well, you want to come back healthy, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what are your plans after this big sailing adventure? Oh my gosh, this is just such an <laughs> exciting thing. It's it's kind of a learning experience, and I, I I actually wasn't this 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 year wasn't intended to be a year of college for me, um, and then my my dad being being Canadian, he he had a 
a friend of his whose daughter participated in the program a few years ago. And oh, so male well and as, female. Exactly, yeah. Oh, There's great. A, a two we didn't talk about that. Now female. I know. Um, uh, and so I feel like I'm going to be learning a lot on this journey. And if, if it doesn't count as my first year of college, then at least I'll come back and be, uh, this is what I want to do. I'll know exactly what I want to do because there'll be so many things that I'll be seeing and experiencing, the cultures, the, the people, the classes. This so. is never wasted. Oh, yeah. What no, you're going is through is forever. never wasted. You are learning. And you, not only that, the idea of being able to interact, to form a group, to do something. I mean, it's, there's nothing more bonding than that. And the people that you were working with with this adventure are going to probably be lifetime friends. Oh yeah, I feel I, we're already no, bonding because we know they, how long we're going to be together and, and the kind of teamwork Because you've a shared we'll experience that nothing like it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, have we shown the second slide? I, 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 I don't know, Greg, did you show the other slide? Yeah, I'll show it. I'll show okay. it again. Yeah, we've been um, talking. <laughs> I just I didn't get to, to mention this. Uh, the, on. I would assume that's the left side of the screen. Uh, is the, the, the under the below deck is where you do like the actual classwork because I mean it is a college experience, it's a schooling experience. Uh -huh. You have to have a laptop; it's mandatory. And then uh, you are top below deck. There is a whiteboard, and they'll give you lessons. And they actually send you another reason of the digital age is you get your coursework on a USB. They mail it to you, and then you plug it in, you download it, and that's your textbook. That's your oh, coursework wow, for the year. Oh wow! Yeah. And uh, just. It, that's that's kind of how it's how it's being run. It's yeah. more digital and getting a little more modernized. But the the ship itself and the traveling we'll be doing is is trying to be preserved as a story. Now, when do you get back? I get back um, next year in May. I'll be arriving in Christensen, Norway. So you're coming on this show, right? And in oh the yeah, I'll, re I'll recap the entire trip. <laughs> recap the whole, and take lots of pictures. So well, we're almost out of time, Jane. I just want to wish you a, a happy sailing. And when you come back, you're going to be tanned, and you're going to be <laughs> excited, and you're going to tell us next summer he's going to be on the show to tell us all about his adventures. I can't wait to hear about it. Thank you very much. Thanks Thanks you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah.